Hello friends and welcome back to Coding Duty and in this video we are going to discuss the best practices on the front end web development in 2022. So now before going on to this video I would like you guys to subscribe to my channel and press the bell button so that you will be able to get the notifications if I post more videos. Okay so now let's get started. So here the first point is use a CSS preprocessor. So here instead of using the pure CSS code in your web application always use a preprocessor such as SCSS or SAS. The next one is CSS preprocessors make it easy to automate the repetitive tasks, reduce the number of errors and code blood. Create the reusable code snippets and ensure a backend compatibility. So for all these, we are using the CSS preprocessor. Each CSS preprocessor has its own syntax that they compile into regular CSS so that the browsers can render it onto the client side. Okay, so now let's move on to the next one that is do not keep src or href empty empty href and src will trigger the unnecessary request that will waste the bandwidth and the server resources so here for example a href you can see the tag given here right so here this a href is equals to an empty tag so do not always keep it empty because it will cause an trigger unnecessarily. The next one is to avoid the CSS expressions. CSS expressions such as calc will degrade the performance of the page. The calc CSS function lets you perform the calculations when specifying the CSS property values. For example, here you can see a background color and they have given an expression which calculates the new date and then it will be converted to hours and then it is choosing if it is modular by 2 then it will be taking a color otherwise another color right. So all these type of expressions should be avoided in CSS. The next one is to use only globally created responsive typographic styles. Define the responsive text tags in global typography and always use those tags in the HTML code which means that you could build a column layout on the desktop and have it stacked to a one column layout for a tablet and a mobile. For typography we can use media queries to make the font size smaller on the mobile devices and bigger onto the desktop devices. The next one is avoid using global JS variables. What is a global JavaScript variable? A variable that is declared, declared outside a function becomes global. Avoid using the JS global variables as they tend to have conflicts. This is because global variables are easily overwritten by other scripts. Global variables are not bad and not even a security concern, but it shouldn't override the values of another variable. The simplest way to avoid the globals altogether is to simply pass your variables using the function arguments. So for example here you can see let car name is equals to Volvo. And there also there can be below so many code lines. Okay? So from that scope of the code you can directly access the car name. So now below you can see a function here. So inside the function also you will be able to access the car name variable okay so this is known as a global scope in javascript variables 
The next one is to place your JavaScript files at the bottom. If we place the JavaScript file at the top, then it will be loaded first and your content loads after that. The reason of putting the JavaScript at the bottom of the page or loading in asynchronously is recommended that the JavaScript actually slows down the page. If some browsers downloading the JS blocks other parallel downloads and in all the browsers executing the JavaScript blocks the UI thread and hence rendering. For example, here you can see the script tag, right? So always place such script tags at the bottom of the file. And coming on to the last point, it is like test while you build to avoid the cross browser issues. If you test your documents on the Firefox or IE of Chrome while you are writing it, cross browser rendering problems will be easier to be fixed. So I hope you guys like this video. So if you have liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell button. So thank you guys for watching this video. Bye bye and see you in the next video.